Welcome back, Nick Lange's Comic Corner. Class success, non-classic. This is episode number 467 and double shot number 383. Uh, two just regular DC trades, not rebirth, just regular DC trades. Uh, first up, it is The Flash, volume 8, full stop, collecting Flash, volume 4, issues 50, 48, 52. Written by Barbara Venditti and Van Jensen, though Venditti leads about halfway through the storyline for some strange reason. With our work by... Jesus Marino, Paul Pelletier, Bill Burns, and Gus Banquez. Is that all of them? Did I get all of them? Yeah, I did. Oh, and Joe Esma. Yeah. Um, I should point out, though, that the Flash costume he's wearing, uh, it's it's kind of like Brett Boop was only here for, like, one store arc and he left. Um, yeah, basically, Flash is black to wearing his, uh, his Jim Lee costume. Now, the rogues do come back. This is by far the only time... Invented his entire run that actually had the rogues part of a, of a story. And, oh yeah, apparently Captain Cole is off the Justice League. I still don't know how in the world got removed from the roster. But this storyline has been building since basically the start of Venditti's run. Uh, basically, uh, of Captain, I think his name is Singh, I think it is. Yeah, Captain Singh. Um... He basically does not like the Flash. He thinks the Flash is a menace, so he hires Flash's enemies to take him down. And, of course, the, the reason why the rogues are doing this, basically, the Trickster is implied to be the team's traitor, but the reason why he's doing this is because he's actually being blackmailed by the Riddler, a Batman villain, all because he's holding Heatwave hostage. And they think Heatwave is dead. But, nope, Heatwave's here alive and well. Um, and... Also, Golden Glider gets out of her coma after being in a coma for quite a while. Yeah, she's been in a coma since, uh, from what I can tell, the start of this volume. Yeah, she's been in a coma for a long time, and finally she gets out of her coma, but her power sort of mixed. So thanks to Flash, she got out of her coma, which is great. Uh, great set of issues. Now, after this, the Rogue do come back in the storyline in, in the third trade, the, the storyline that came after Return of the Shade. Which is nice, the fact that Josh Williamson brought back the Rogues. Um, but yeah, first time the Rogues were heavily uh, featured in a Flash book since, of course, Francis Mount Francis Mount Pong, Brad Buccellos run. Which they featured very heavily during that run. Ben Diddy, uh, it's almost like up until he did this arc, he wanted nothing to do with the Rogues. Nothing. Basically, he had a... a um, a 12 parts, a, a 10, 11 part story dealing with a evil Flash, and then he had the Zoom storyline. Now he deals with the Rogues. Okay, fine, but yeah, this is good. Um, of course, Singh does find out the very honest of Flash, though they also get they don't for some reason I don't really now they don't listen to it back here, but in the book they do give a sneak preview of the Flash Rebirth special. I don't really know why the trade does the back of the trade doesn't list it, but in the actual book itself, um, let's see, nope, they do not list it at all. Even though the Flash Rebirth special, the, the Rebirth one shot is in here, was well, a sneak preview only for about opening a few pages, but okay, but this is good. I give this a 9.5 out of 10. I love stories for Flash featuring the Rogues. And this is a really dang good story. Though, yeah. I'm glad Ben Diddy basically... Fat is running basically nicely with, with, with the rogues. Alright. Next up is... Wonder Woman! By George Perez. Volume 2. Collecting Wonder Woman Volume 2. She's 1524 in Wonder Woman A number 1. Um, this book has the first appearance of Cersei. Uh, no cheat in here. There's also Silver Swan. Uh... Plus, also, it follows up some stuff happening from the opening uh, story arc featuring Ares. Yeah, there's elements of that. But Perez is not the only person who... He does do the artwork as well, but he, this book... This is running this... Co these issues co written by Lean Ween. Never got a chance to meet the guy, but I did read his... Uh, I did meet one of the artists he worked with, uh, Brian Wright, uh, Bernie Wrightstein, who did Swamp Thing with him. Now, the artwork in here is done by... Uh, Blonde with George Perez, done by Brian Bolton, Chris Marion, Art Adams... Josh Bolton, uh, Juez Luis Garcia Lopez, him I met, nice guy, um, Kurt Swan, never got a chance to meet because he got, 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 the guy passed away like, I don't know, almost 20 years ago I think he passed away, and Russ Otto, never met him either, 
But yeah, so uh, everybody who did the artwork in here, uh, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, I have met him. Nice guy. And I got him, I got him to sign an issue of uh, New Teen Titans he did, which, which is basically the only issue he did, and an issue of All-Star Western. The guy is a great... Oh, yeah, I think... Um, yeah, I think that's it, but yeah. Nice guy. Uh, and the issues in here are all really good. Uh, Perez does a great job with these issues. I'm glad the fact they second volume, but as far as I can tell with this book... This collects volumes two and three of that original collected George Perez's one for Wonder Woman. But his run lasted for 62 issues, not 24. Though his last uh, arc he did, basically, which signed the War of God, that is in trade. So they got a little wild to finish up his run, which lasted a good while. Which basically, if you look at this entire volume, which lasted 226 issues, uh, George Perez had the longest. His run lasted for a little over five years. Yeah, a little over five years, which is actually pretty good. A lot of the other writers exceeded only saying off about two, pretty much almost everybody else who was the writer of this particular book after him only staying off for about two, three years. The only one come close, basically, almost as long as his, is Greg Ruckers' one. His run was four years long. Yeah, but this book is good. I give this book a 9.75 out of 10. It just pure awesomeness as finest. Uh, great old George Perez. Really, I, I was really hoping to meet him when, when uh, at Mancar Orlando, but I wasn't able to because my dad was having a panic attack because they couldn't find a place to plug in his laptop. Hopefully, if I get a chance, if he goes to the convention again, hopefully that doesn't happen. First time I actually did see him at, uh, I think it was at Megacon Tampa last year, I think it was, but apparently you had to get a number for basically the game for a sketch and an autograph. Yeah. But I, he's one of those artists I really wanted to meet. But the first time was technically kind of my fault because I got there a little bit late. I didn't know about the whole uh, uh, ticket thing. Because I think it was my dad's fault. Right? So that's it for this one. It's going to be one, one more comic corner coming right after this one. And that will be episode number... Uh, 468 and double shot number 384. Okay, but until then, I will see you there. Bye.